Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, about, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago, I sold my Nissan Leaf. It was a 30 kilowatt hour Ascenta. It had done about 54,000 miles and it was three and a half-ish years old. Now, what this means is that I can tell you how much this car has cost me in terms of total cost of ownership. We're talking tires, maintenance services, MOTs, fuel, which is easier to figure out than it is in a petrol car. And of course, the big one, the one that people always mention that I don't think about enough when I go on about running costs, depreciation. I know how much I sold the car for, I know how much I paid for the car in the first place, which means I have all the data I need to know how much this car has cost me throughout its entire time with me, the whole three and a half years. I'm also gonna try and compare it against uh, an equivalent petrol or diesel car and figure out how much it costs in terms of pence per mile. So. Let's, uh, let's get on. First thing to do is to bring up all of the different areas. So here we go. We have fuel, tires, MOT and servicing, depreciation of course, and VED slash car tax, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll start off with putting all the figures up first and then I'll go through them one by one in terms of how I figured out each and how I've got to that figure. Uh, I have deliberately left out insurance on this one because in my experience, insurance is dictated or rather the price of insurance is dictated by the person more than the car. For example, a lad at work got a quote for the Nissan Leaf and it was about four times more than we were paying, even though it's the same car, same age, same everything. So insurance, I think, isn't, isn't part of the car's cost, it's the part of the person's cost to drive. Uh, however, I will tell you how much it's cost us, just so you have those figures. Right, here are all the prices. We'll start with fuel, £1,065 for 50,000, 50, th thaw, thaw? £1,065 for 50,000, I've done it again, <laughs> Jesus. £1,065 for 54,000 miles. Let me just repeat that, 54,000 miles and the fuel cost is just over a thousand pounds. If you don't believe me on this one, there are several videos in my channel where I've gone through the cost of, uh, of fuel and electricity in this case of an EV. I will put the link to those videos in the description. I'm not gonna explain it and extend this video to do that, but basically I charge my car at night when it is very cheap. I have a time of day tariff, and if you plug a car in, pretty much any electric vehicle, if you plug it in, say, at dinner time, you can set a charge timer either on the car or the uh, chargers themselves now, uh, and it will charge when you want it to, when it is cheapest. So that is how I always hit the cheapest time in terms of charging the car. External charging costs are included as well, of course, but that probably accounts to five-ish percent of my total journeys in terms of when I charge away from home, use rapid charging, things like that. As I said, the figures of how I've come to that are in several other videos, which I'll put in the description below, but suffice to say, I pay on average 13 pounds 50 per 1000 miles when I charge at home. Now, tires. I have gone through, I think it was two sets on the rear and three sets on the front. Uh, and they averaged about 60, 65 pounds, sometimes a little bit more um, per corner. Uh, I know one time I got all four done, there was an offer on at the time and they were quite cheap. But basically, I've overestimated. In fact, I'll say that now. All the prices I've shown you here and I'm, I'm giving you, these are overestimations. I am biasing it away from an electric vehicle on this one. I have spent less than £700 on tyres, but I've just added a bit more just so people can't accuse me of being biased against the uh, the petrol engine to, to make the EV figures look better. The Leaf is hardly a hot hatch that requires some really expensive rubber, but I have put some decent stuff on it, typically uh, Mitsubishi Cross Climate Pluses. Next will be MOT slash servicing. Now, the car's only three and a half years old, so it's only had one MOT, uh, and that sailed straight through, so that was effectively a £40 cost. The servicing, all done by Nissan main dealers, and it's probably worth pointing out that if you went back three or four years or, or further, the price of Nissan's servicing, you know, minor, major, minor, major, uh, was a lot cheaper. It was about, I think it was £100 when I had my first Leaf. This is before this came along. 
And now for that very same service, just two or three years later, in terms of when they changed the pricing, it's now £150 for the same thing. A 50% increase in service costs for the same service in about three years. <laughs> Partly why I didn't want another Nissan. That is basically what it's cost me over the last three and a half years because there's almost nothing to service on an EV. It's even still on its original discs and pads because the regen takes care of most of the braking in an EV. Whew, quite warm wearing this uh, lovely uh, hooded fleece. Um, I may have to get a drink from this water bottle. In fact, no, I won't have a drink from this water bottle. I think I will have a drink from this flask. I'll be honest, I don't know why I bothered doing that because it's not as if I can send anyone anything at the moment. <laughs> right, VED or car tax as a lot of people uh, know it as. Vehicle excise duty. This is of course zero for uh, a leaf for, for any electric vehicle at the moment. Um, and well, what's more to say, zero, there's no cost there. Now on to the big one, depreciation. The thing that people always say I miss, even though I don't, when I'm guesstimating running costs of electric vehicles. I know how much I paid for the car. In fact, I will show you because as always on YouTube, you have to prove everything that you say or do. This is the, uh, the finance agreement that we took out on that leaf back in 2016. There's a registration number that uh, everybody should be familiar with and the price. Also, not percent finance, so didn't need to pay any interest either, which unfortunately Nissan don't do anymore. Um, £15,728. Now, if you're wondering how I got such a good deal on what was a car that had a list price of close to £30,000, uh, it's just because it was a slightly different time back then. There were a lot heavier discounts then than there were now. And the list price is something which I say time and time again, just ignore it. It doesn't come close to what people typically pay. I mean, who buys a, a, a Ford Focus or a Fiesta and pays list price? It doesn't happen unless it's something special. Back in 2016 and, and further back from that, there were heavy discounts for, for EVs because they were trying to attract uh, early adopters. The average price of a 30 kilo hour center, my car, back in 2016 was probably about 17, 17 and a half for anybody that actually bothered to ring more than one dealership. Um, I got mine for 15, seven and, and whatever it was by literally just doing that, ringing around and finding, finding, should I say, finding a dealership that was desperate enough to sell me one, uh, probably just wanted to hit their targets. I knew the car, I knew the spec, I knew the colour, I knew everything. I didn't visit them, I just rung them up, said, this is the car, this is the price, this is the spec, can you do it? And one of them did. So that's how I got it at such a good price. And before anybody says I got a, a deal because I was on YouTube, in 2016, I think I had about, well, I don't know, 2,000 subscribers or something. I, was, I wasn't really on YouTube at all. Right, so we know the buy price. The sale price was £10,500. Now, this is something that I was slightly miffed at because just nine months ago, maybe a year ago from now, that car was worth about 12500 And I was thinking, brilliant, whenever I get to selling that car and getting whatever I, I want next, I've barely lost a penny. And then in space of nine months, maybe a year, it dropped from 13, 12 and a half to 10 and a half. Um, but that, that's how it is, isn't it, with uh, with cars. But yeah, so that, that was the total depreciation, which was 5,228 pounds. At this stage, just to head off what inevitably is going to be typed in the comments, well, you're not factoring a new battery every few years. Ugh, it, st it still happens, I still get that sort of comment. The battery warranty on that car is eight years or 100,000 miles. And that guarantees a minimum state of health after that period, not that you need a new battery after eight years. I've done this time and time again. In fact, I'll put another uh, link to a video in the description below about batteries. So if you, before you say that you have to factor in battery replacement, please do watch that, okay? Battery swept aside because it would not be a problem and it won't be a problem for the next person that bought it off me either. Uh, the total of all that is 7,000. £443. That is absolutely everything, excluding insurance, I have spent on that car. If you're wondering, insurance cost us between £280 and £350 over the three and a half years we had that car. We're at a good age now where it doesn't seem to matter what car we get, it doesn't cost that much more. 
if we put that into pence per mile, just out of curiosity, the total running cost in pence per mile is 13.8 pence per mile. And I said, that, that's not fuel, that's not running costs, that's the whole car, everything. If we take out depreciation, actually, if we just look at running costs, how much would that be? Wow, 4.1 pence per mile. That's how much it's cost me for fuel, servicing, tyres, MOT, all of that. And people wonder why I bought my second electric vehicle three and a half years ago. That has saved me an absolute fortune given the mileage I do. Um, so I think what we don't have to do now is try and compare that against a petrol or diesel car. So what I'm going to do is ignore the price of what people paid for their petrol car. Take out depreciation and just see what the other figures were. Right, so the petrol car, you can tell I've been on Google Images. Uh, let's have a look at tyres, MOT servicing, uh, car tax as well, or VED, and then look at the fuel costs depending on what you would get in terms of miles per gallon. So I'm going to give us three figures here, 40 miles, 50 miles and 60 miles per gallon to see what the fuel costs would be at those different rates. Remember that's fuel costs for the, for the entire life of the car, the whole 54,000 miles, not what you get on a long run, not what you get if you drive it economically, all of it, everything. And for the American people watching, it's UK gallons, not American ones, which there is a difference. Okay. Right, so for tyres, I'm just going to assume it's the same, £700. So there's no difference between the Leaf and a Focus or a Golf. Let's keep that the same. The MOT and the servicing, again, I'm going to favour this on the side of the petrol engine uh, or diesel engine, £450. Now, look at Nissan's prices on their website, if you don't believe me, and other manufacturers as well. The servicing costs for a petrol engine are more than an, uh, an equivalent electric vehicle. But again, I'm going to keep it at the same. So let's imagine the MOT and servicing and the tyres are identical for both the petrol and the electric car. Now back in 2016 you could, I believe, get some petrol engine cars that were zero as well on in terms of car tax. So again I'm going to favour the petrol car by assuming that nobody back then for three and a half years has paid any VED or car tax. Depreciation I'm going to ignore for now as I said, uh, so let's now skip to just the fuel. Now for this I've used a nice website. Uh, fuel economy calculator basically. Uh, this is the sort of thing that you get. So you just put the miles in, the miles per gallon, and the fuel costs. Now, again, this is something else which I have to state is very, very much in favor of the petrol engine in terms of the figures I'm about to show you. I'm using the fuel cost as I can get down the road today, which is the cheapest it's been for years. One pound and three pence. If I looked at the average over the past well, three and a half years, it would probably be about £1.15, £1.20 pence per litre. This is immensely cheap, and I'm going to price it at today's pricing, not at what it actually would have cost me had I got a petrol engine, uh, sorry, a petrol engine car three and a half years ago. So this, in reality, would be a bigger sum in terms of how much you spent on fuel. Okay, if your car got 60 miles to the gallon on average over the entire 54,000 miles, which is very, very good, um, then you would have spent £4,214 on fuel. Uh, 50 miles per gallon, just over five grand. And if your car averages 40 miles per gallon throughout its life, then you would have spent £6,321 on petrol alone. And remember, that's at today's prices, not at the prices you would have paid over the last three and a half years. That, all those figures should be substantially higher. But again, I'm going to bias it towards the petrol engine so people don't accuse me of favouring electric. Let's add them all together. So basically, tyres are servicing and petrol, and the figures in red are the total running costs of these petrol engine cars, these mythical ones, over the last three and a half years, 54,000 miles. So 7,000, not 70, 7,471 is the most expensive one if you've got 40 miles per gallon, and 5,364 if you had a nice efficient petrol engine that give you 60 miles a gallon. Let me add the leaf onto that now, just so you can see the figures. Uh, yeah, 7,443 pounds for the total cost for the leaf. So you can see there that compared to a 60 miles per gallon car, you're just over 2,000 pounds worse off in my leaf. But hang on a minute, I have not even factored in the car yet. The depreciation is zero on the petrol car, which means that if your car averages 40 miles a gallon, 
you have paid more, or well, basically the same, than I have. And that's assuming somebody give you that car for free. Let me just add depreciation onto those figures to see what we'll come out with. Assume it's the same as the Leaf. So all petrol cars that I've got here and the Leaf depreciated exactly the same. In reality, the electric vehicle depreciates less than the petrol one because supply and demand are nowhere near. Look at the difference. If your car averages 40 miles a gallon over its entire life, then that means you're spending 5,000 pounds, over 5,000 pounds more than I would have in the three and a half years, 54,000 miles. Some are guesstimates, some are estimates. A lot of them are very accurate and overestimated in favor of the petrol engine. As I said, the fuel prices on the petrol cars should be a lot higher than that because the petrol prices were a lot higher over the last three years than they are today. So this is best case scenario for the petrol engine. And you're still 3,000 pounds worse off on an efficient petrol car. That's why I chose the Leaf all those years ago. I do a lot of miles, it saves me a lot of money, and it means that the next car I buy, the, you know, the, the reason I've got the Tesla, is because I've saved so much in that three and a half years. As the phrase goes, look after the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. That's my philosophy anyway. Now, let me be very clear here. I am not saying that an electric vehicle, even today's electric vehicles that do a bigger range, are suitable for everybody. I could not own an electric vehicle if I couldn't charge at home. There is nowhere to charge anywhere near me. I live in North Yorkshire. Nowhere to charge. I could not survive without home charging. So I'm not telling everyone out there, go and get an electric vehicle, you'll save a fortune. Not everybody can charge at home. Not everybody could survive with the range that, uh, that, that I had. If you have the option of one, this just proves you that financially, they make a lot more sense than people believe. The total cost of ownership is ultimately all that matters. Yes, you need a deposit. That's the sticking point. The reason why it took me four years to get that Tesla Model 3 sat in my garage today is because I had to save up such a large deposit to make the monthly repayments cheap enough for me to be able to afford it. What I'm saying is don't just look at the price of the car. Look at how much the car should be worth in three years time, how much you will save in fuel costs alone. Again, if you do a lot of miles, they could be huge. When I first got my Nissan Leaf, I had a BMW 330i, a total gas guzzler. And that used to cost me well over, I think it was 250 pounds a month in fuel alone. And it was a beautiful car, a peach of an engine. But I bought the Leaf. It cost me, I think it was 200 pounds a month at the very first Leaf. And I was saving, I think it was 210 pounds a month at that stage in fuel. So I was saving more in fuel than the car cost me, quite frankly. Not percent finance, no deposit. You can see where the figures come from here. So yeah, again, they're not for everybody at EVs at the moment, and they're not just for environmentalists. I am not an environmentalist. I never have been. I have never mentioned the environment as a reason to buy an electric vehicle. I've always gone down the financial route. Now I have that Tesla. It's a lot more expensive, but as long as it doesn't depreciate too much in terms of value, then I'm not going to lose out. The best way of looking at it is if you buy a £15,000 car that's worth £10,000 in three years, it's cost you five grand in depreciation. If you buy a car that costs £30,000 that's worth £25,000 after three years, it's cost you £5,000 in depreciation. The total cost of the car is the same, even though one is a lot more expensive. The only sticking point is that you need typically a bigger deposit and maybe even bigger monthly repayments. But at the end of the day, when you sell that car, you get all that money back. So there's still an affordability issue there. Absolutely. No denying that one. Right, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Am I still relatable? If you've got a petrol car, do you think, well, I didn't think it'd be that good? Or are you one of those that for some reason absolutely hates the electric vehicle and it's an affront to everything you believe in and it doesn't matter what information or data is put in front of you, you will never own one. That's fine, that's your choice and I am not saying you should go out and get one. I'm just displaying figures and then saying, right, there you go, I'll leave it to you. So thank you for watching. Uh, fingers crossed this lockdown won't go on forever, although it looks like it's gonna be on for a while. So I'm afraid I'm kind of stuck to the uh, studio slash spare office in my house with a shelf behind me. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.